Hello and welcome to a guide to Hudrick, one of the Battle of Polytopia's more interesting tribes. As a concept, the idea of Hudrick seems simple. You overwhelm the enemy with hordes of archers. In reality, if you want to get much mileage out of the Hudrick tribe, you need to play in a couple of very certain ways, which is what this video is about. With that being said though, Hudrick are a solidly mid-tier tribe, who are simply not going to provide the same value to a serious player as say Zabasi, Bardur or Keku, so I recommend turning to a more competitive tribe if you wish to play in any serious capacity. Hudrick is the sixth tribe in Polytopia and the first to start the game with a tier 2 technology, in this case it's archery. Archers are a reasonably useful unit in the middle game, but as far as starting units are concerned they are rather soft and very slow. To that end, I recommend that all Hudrick players research hunting immediately to take advantage of the increased forest spawn that the tribe has. By the middle game you should aim to have every tech in the hunting branch with the exception of spiritualism, which should give you a decent economy. The advantage that Hudrick tends to get over other tribes is the fact that they do not have to research any units other than riders until later on in the game than other tribes, because they have the capacity to build archers so quickly. However, you would not mistake this for the notion that Hudrick can get away with spamming archers right on into the end game. Instead, you need to siege the archer spam when our tribes have begun to have access to knights, and after this only use archers to deal with boats and in other very specific circumstances. Never allow the enemy to get close to you with knights, or indeed riders, unless you have the tools to deal with that, namely swordsmen, knights, defenders, or battleships. That being said, Hudrick can be played in a slightly more unique way on a crowded map. By using your archer to move into a forest and building a warrior immediately, Hudrick players can take advantage of defense bonuses to ride out the early game while they research forestry and mathematics. This is not a strategy I recommend except when playing with 8 or more opponents, but you should be aware that Hudrick can be difficult to invade in the early game due to their forest bonuses and immediate access to ranged units. Hence, you should try to avoid the rookie mistake of simply building masses of archers, which can be easily destroyed by riders and are simply too costly for what they offer the player. Instead, focus your developments on developing late game units such as catapults, an especially useful unit to a tribe with many forests and the chance to get some excellent sawmill spots. Mobile units, in contrast to when I talked about Polaris in my previous guide and not my preference on Hudrick, for the simple reason that they have far too many forests that restrict movement. That being said, riders are a versatile unit and Rosero must have technology, unless you're using ports to connect all of your cities. Speaking of navy, Hudrick are not the optimal navy tribe in most scenarios. They do not have the stopping power of Illyrians, Navalons, the speed of naval development or Kiku, or even the amphibious capability of Aquarium. Therefore, I suggest a cautious approach to fighting against enemy tribes on the sea, and the use of archers to fend off small scale attacks in the early game. The forest bonus can be surprisingly useful here, with the caveat that you won't have much to do if Kiku starts sending battleships towards you, and you have only archers to defend against them. Now as for comparisons to other tribes, Hudrick is really a mid to late game tribe, so against the Barsi or similar turn 0 tribes, and especially Bardra or Imperius who can research an extra attack on turn 1, Hudrick are weak and tend to suffer. And that is, at least in the early game. Now, compared to other hand to hand tribes in the late game, like Polaris, on the other hand, things get a bit more interesting. Here I must confess a bias, I play and enjoy Polaris more than any other tribe. That and the amount of misinformation about them online was why I made their guide first, but I still think that Polaris do have the upper hand because in the end game they simply have stronger super units and the ability to steamroll. This to me, along with the low cost and high value of outposts, is why Polaris are broadly considered to be mid to upper tier. However, Hudrick players can still reliably get very strong economies as a result of the fact that they have so many good sawmill opportunities. If we're going to compare them to another mid-tier tribe like Jinji, I find the two very hard to separate. Jinji and Hudrick both have slow starting but eventually very powerful economies and also have slight starting advantages in the respective forms of archers and the ability to, to move in mountains and find villages and move easily. Their economies come respectively from metal and forges and, in the case of Hudrick, lump outs and sawmills. However, Hudrick are my preference between the two due to their more creative potential playstyles and I like their aesthetic. As for tribes like uh, Kitsali and Umaji, who are similar in a lot of ways, Hudrick trumps them very easily but for different reasons. Umaji have a very poor economy in the early game, 
What gets are they have a useless starting unit on attack and so few farms that they suffer in the late game. Furthermore, I wanted to take this opportunity to discuss the other matchups of the Hudrick tribe. When Hudrick are matched against Kiku, this ends up with a fairly interesting encounter, in which Kiku unfortunately will nearly always get the upper hand. Kiku are simply a tribe that are just too powerful when it comes to the navy, the naval strength. And Hudrick simply cannot rival that with their own much weaker navy, and, and Kiku will simply get the superior economy with ports, battleships, whales, and of course their starting fishing tech. The same applies to Barda, but really to a lesser extent on the naval and more on the land, and I would consider Barda to be almost an upgrade to Hudrick, so I would... I would not consider Hudrick to be unplayable because of it, but what I would say is that if you're choosing between the two to play them in a serious capacity again in PvP, if you've got like a Discord match or something along those lines, I would say that Barda is nearly always going to be your, your almost objectively superior choice, just because of the fact that although Hudrick do have maybe slightly better spawn rates in some cases, it's just that Barda have too much strength on the early game economy front. They can level up their capital on turn zero, and then on turn 1 they got those 4 stars if they choose Workshop, which you nearly always will. Or you can get that Explorer and you can just see so much land straight away that that isn't my preferred option. And Barda overall, they, they just get that jump start from the ability to have hunting straight away. And I find that Hudrick will often not really recover from that until right on into the late game. And even then, Barda will have researched archery and forestry and mathematics by that point, if not even faster than you as Hudrick. And you do actually have to backtrack on the tech tree because, you know, archery is, is, a, is a tier 2 tech and you have to come back down to hunting before you can get forestry, whereas Bardo can grab forestry almost straight away. And I could talk about this for quite a while, but I think I'll talk now instead about their matchups with tribes like Imo and Yadak. So I would, I'm, I'm actually quite generous to Hudrick. I would say that they're a better tribe than Imo. I would say they're almost on par with Yadak, but the thing is Yadak just get that better economy because Rhodes is such an indispensable tech and I think that's what makes them, you know, a mid to upper tier on par with Polaris, on par with Illyrium. It's just that ability to move your unit so much faster and the ability to level up your capital so much more that to me makes the tribe Yadak so much stronger than Hudrick. And I think I'll make a guide on them soon because a lot of people do misinterpret the way you're supposed to play them. But in, in the case of Hudrick, I'd say there's really not that much to them. It's about leveling up your economy. It's about playing with a fun play style, yes. And they have nice aesthetics and you might like their music. And all of that is well and good. But ultimately, they are just not, not the strongest tribe. And no, no play style can compensate for that. But you've got to remember that Polytopia is a very skill-focused game. So if you're playing this and your opponent is markedly weaker than you, then you are going to beat them. Like, no question, no tribe will ever guarantee you victory, nor should any tribe ever guarantee you victory. But I'm just letting you know that as Hutrick, you may incur some disadvantages compared to other tribes, particularly those that can level up their capital on turn zero. I mean, even Luxidor, which I would consider not to be the strongest T-Zero tribe these days, I would say even Luxidor still will have some kind of advantages over Hudrick. I mean, some quite significant advantages just because they have that extra income, that extra ability to research whatever technology they want. And they're very flexible compared to Hudrick, who really you're, you're kind of boxed in to using these one or two play styles. Either you build a warrior on turn zero or you research hunting. I think that that is the crux of why I would not consider Hudrick to be one of my favorite tribes anymore. Fun though they can be, and that applies to just about every tribe in the game as well. So, thank you for watching this video, and I really hope you go out there and enjoy playing the Hudrick tribe. As you should, they are rightfully a very fun tribe, and well, well done to the developers for designing such a great, great tribe and a great playstyle.